Thank you. <laughs> anyway, it's time now to welcome someone else who, like Tim, has what it takes to be an astronaut. And here's why. Go. Ten seconds, hands on your head, go. Going to 4.5. We really want to put the best people onto the rocket ship. <laughs> Our first choice is Susie. Well, a big welcome to the show to Susie and congratulations Thank on you. winning astronaut. You have what it takes. Amazing. I think we should have a round of applause, should we? <laughs> Challenges. I mean, they looked really hardcore. I'm sure Tim is sitting there thinking, "Gosh, yes, I've been through some of those." I mean, was it was it really really tough? I mean, what was the hardest thing then out of all the things we saw there? Um, I think one of the most intimidating things was we were in a capsule um, strapped in, and the capsule was dropped into the water, and then the water came in over our heads, and the capsule began turning oh. over under the water, and we had to escape from the capsule. And actually, it was fine, but I was nervous about it because I'd never done anything like it before, so mm. quite an intimidating idea. I'm I sure. Think and we were just talking about the dream of becoming an astronaut, you know, yeah. when you're younger. But I mean, for you, was it was it something that was kind of a reality? I mean, I was always interested in being an astronaut, but actually growing up, I wanted to be an explorer. I wanted to okay, be an right. Antarctic explorer. I'd read all about Scott and his expeditions, yeah. and that's what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, so, so at the minute, what are you doing then? Because you have to wait until they ask for you know, more astronauts. So at the minute, what, what, what are you doing as a job? So I'm an associate professor of planetary science at the University of Leicester. Um, so I have that job full time at the moment. Um, and then um, also, you know, looking forward to maybe in the future one day applying to be a real astronaut. We'll have to see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so just talk us through what you've got there because this is fascinating what you've been working on here. Yeah, this is something that um, a team of scientists and engineers and technicians at the University of Leicester have been building. It's part of an instrument that's going to go on the next mission to Mercury. So I study Mercury and its dynamics and its system. This mission will launch uh, in uh, October 2018. Right. It's called Bepi Colombo. Um, it's a European Space Agency and Japanese Space Agency mission. This is one piece of it. It's not the piece that's going into space that I'm holding right. here, but it's an exact replica. And uh, this is part of an instrument called an X-ray spectrometer. And what this does is it will tell us what the composition of Mercury is, what its surface composition is. We'll get resolution down to maybe one kilometre. We'll find out really what it's made of. And this is the most information anybody will ever have gathered about Mercury. Oh, by and, a factor of 10 what, or 100. what happens then to that information? So the information will come straight back to us at the university. We'll process the information okay. and then we'll make it public for scientists all over the world. And we'll learn about Mercury's formation, its evolution mm -hmm. um, for the first time. How detailed is the information about what the surface of Mercury is like at the moment? At the moment, we have a good idea uh, of maybe some of the elements that, that are on Mercury's surface, but there are yeah. areas we've never been able to see before. And this instrument will give us unprecedented resolution of those areas. Oh, oh my goodness. It's going to yes. take, what, se is it seven years or something to get there? Seven years. So it launches right. in October 2018 um, and it will get there in 2025. So we have a long wait. We have a long wait ahead of us, yeah. Oh, it's like the M25. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we were talking earlier, weren't we, about space tourism. And yeah. very shortly, I mean, what do you think? In the next 10, 20 years, I mean, it will be an actual reality that people can go to space. Where do you stand on it, Tim? Yeah, I think it'd be le less time than that. I really? Mean, uh, we've already had several space tourists go to the International Space Station, paying yeah. an awful yeah. lot of money to fly on the Soyuz mm. spacecraft. But what we're going to see in the next couple of years is the space tourism in terms of companies like Virgin Galactic and uh, Blue Origin, for example, XCore, offering suborbital flights, so a hop up to just over 100 kilometres yeah. and then fall back down maybe four or five minutes of weightlessness. And I mean, it's an exclusive club, isn't it, those that have obviously been to space. So to open it out, yeah. for, I mean, we're in a very, very interesting place, really, in our history, aren't mm. we, because We of are, yeah. I mean, really, the next 10, 15 years is going to be fascinating with what's going on, you know, in the space tourism and also mm. commercialisation of low Earth orbit. We have already commercial spacecraft supplying the International Space Station and uh, soon commercial companies are going to start building their own space stations onto the ISS, which allows Gosh. the national space agencies to look to the next step which is the moon as a stepping stone to mars oh yeah. my goodness yeah. Yeah. Oh my, it blows your mind doesn't it and there's something major isn't there tim happening in 10 days time Yes, well, yeah, in 10 days' time, Sentinel 5P, which is uh, the European Space Agency's latest um, Earth observation satellite, is going to be, start sending back its data. Now, Sentinel 5P is the sixth 
uh, climate change uh, satellite, if you like, that we have in orbit, Earth right. Observation Satellite. Uh, and so the data that that's going to be sending down is going to be extremely important for atmospheric pollution and in particular monitoring air quality in our cities. Right. And as soon as that opens, can the information start being, being back? Absolutely, yeah. They'll run a series of tests and then the information will start flooding in. Right. And that's the same with what you're working on as well. As soon as it gets there in seven years' time, you don't have to wait for it because it's not going to come back, is it, basically? The, 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 the spacecraft itself won't come back. No. But the data will come back almost immediately. We'll start processing as fast as we can, get the information out there so scientists Gosh. can start studying it. it. It's mad, isn't it, sitting here it with is? you two? It really is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoosh! <laughs> yeah. Shit, have you got any questions that you would like on your space? Because <laughs> uh, you, you, you're quite obsessed as well. When Tim walked in, you were like, oh! Oh, yeah, Tim! Basement. My boy Mackenzie uh, has followed your story every time you've been on telly. Oh, Dan, it's a space, proper a spaceman. And he wants to know about has there been strange things you've spotted? Like, has there been a UFO or you think he may have seen <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because yeah. right? I, I think that I still believe on other planets there uh -huh. could be life. And I'm not talking about, you know, amoebas and water and all that. But have you ever spotted something, been on your own looking out the window and going, Oh, there, there, was, there was one morning which is very funny because I, I, you don't see in daytime space is black because the sun is so bright, earth is so bright, you don't see any lights out there, you don't oh. see any stars. And one time I was looking out and I saw three bright white lights flying in formation and I thought that's very unusual. And I'd been up there for about five months at this point, never seen anything like it. <gasps> Called over my crewmate Jeff Williams and said, what do you make of that? And we were both you know, trying to work it out. And then we, what we thought, we were looking at bright lights far away. We realized they were actually very, very close. It was small droplets of something leaking out of the Progress resupply vehicle. <laughs> oh, uh, I, <laughs> so, so we realized the Progress resupply vehicle was, was leaking and, then the, and the, <laughs> it was liquid that was crystallizing then reflecting sunlight. Why'd you have to say to MB? Yeah. Said he were UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I guess you question. I guess you want to believe that there's something out there, though. You were looking for in hope. We're, we're all searching for signs of life. Um, yeah. I mean, we've got the Curiosity rover on Mars currently, you know, searching for signs of life. We've got yeah. future robotic missions to Mars with exactly that objective. You want, um, you and want I think we, it, yeah. I think we're very close to finding signs of um, microbial life forms, very small life forms, either past or maybe even present. Who knows? Beneath the surface of Mars. Mm -hmm. wow.